Hello everyone, welcome to another video and also welcome to the one of the most visit spots in this house is the kitchen and um, and why? Because Microgeophagus gemirez Remen Blue uh, they breed for about two weeks now and the fries are all, all around the tank and um, we spend a lot of time over here sit down by just looking to the tank because the behavior of this fish are just amazing. Well, how I should start this video, and um, I think it's better just to start from the very beginning. This tank is doing now one month since it was escaped, or in other words, it was rescaped because I have used the old soil, old plants, and also spare rocks and wood that I had in the balcony. So I had a lot of issues from the very beginning because I did a big mistake. I forgot to cap the old soil with a tiny layer of a new soil uh, because I thought all the nutrients were gone and um, it should be just fine to place it like this in the tank but it was a big big mistake because since I put a lot of root tubs in my tanks uh, he ended up for releasing a lot of nutrients and start getting a lot of algae um, however uh, it's nothing that I usually um, worry about because I can always fight that algae in a different way by just cleaning, vacuum, using a toothbrush or even a brush, a normal brush, just to brush the algae, take care or even drain, do the water change I want. But the thing is, um, I build up this aquascape to try to breed the Microgeophagus Ramirez German Blue. And, um, I think I put them in the tank too early uh, and why because since they were uh, trying to breed in the um, 90 centimeters planted tank that I have in the living room um, after um, they, the, the fry uh, have been eaten by the other fish or just hide somewhere um, all the Ramirez start to fight and fight really really bad and um, was already visible in the mouth. They have some cuts and everything. And um, I have decided just to take the first couple that uh, breed or start to breed in um, that tank, the tank that I have from the competition tank, the 90 centimeters. I took the, the one couple, the first one, and I put it over here. But I never thought that uh, after one week of putting it here, they decided to breed. So, you know, sometimes we force so much uh, trying to breed um, most of the species and um, nature always have the last word and um, we can force, but usually will not work. But those guys, since they got it um, so peaceful in this tank, 
and also there is uh, also nice water that is very similar to the one that I have in the living room like the 90 centimeters tank the water is more or less similar because I use tap water for doing my water change and then um, the parameters was just nice um, I must say that I did a small mistake because I increased a little bit the temperature on this tank um, because since I was doing a little bit more water change I just wanted the water just to uh, increase a little bit faster and uh, accidentally I put it in 27.5 and um, then I did a big water change and uh, since that point they decided to breed once again and um, of course uh, since they laid the eggs on the wood they move it from place to place and uh, I thought well uh, the tank is probably not mature enough uh, they will end up by eating the eggs will not be a problem should not be too concerned about it however I trust a little bit uh, on them and I have decided just not to clean or vacuum uh, all the areas inside of the tank and um, those guys are tough because they really decided to take this forward and um, the fries are there and um, since they hatch it uh, the eggs since they hatch it um, we are now on the second week uh, is doing tomorrow two weeks to be more precise that the fry are swimming all over the tank uh, the only thing that I've done in this tank since I saw the eggs I took the dwarf buffer uh, and I put it on the other tank because I know that um, that guy as soon as he sees something moving he's going to attack and going to eat the only fish I have in this tank is the Otocincus affinis and also Corridoras pygmaeus nothing more and I left them there because uh, I, I needed something to clean uh, the wood, the organic waste, and also the 10, I think 8 or 10 Corridor Pygmaeus just to clean a little bit of the bottom of the tank. However, Corridor Pygmaeus usually don't behave as normal Corridors, they tend just to swim in on the middle of the tank, stay on the leaves, stay on uh, the plants, on the wood. They don't like to be too much on the soil or sand, but however, when they are uh, angry they, they still need to have some food and the idea is just to leave them there so anytime I put some food in the tank uh, they will help just to clean a little bit the mess yeah because it was a big big mess on the beginning because since the eggs uh, hatch it and the fry start swimming all over um, we know uh, we need to try to make the fries to uh, eat and um, I had it from before because I bought it uh, before this one is a uh, liquid Artemia uh, I tried I feed them uh, the old ones with this but I guess it was not a problem of food or nutrition it was just be eaten by the other fish or just they are placed on the bush of the stem plants but um, I believe they will not survive or um, I've seen for the moment I have seen nothing but those guys take a while to grow this is not like breeding guppies or any vivipar uh, fish uh, like mollies no those guys take a while to grow and we need to be very uh, careful with the water parameters um, guys if you think that keeping a planted tank is tough try to breed those guys and then you're going to see all the time that you're going to spend just in maintenance because I am doing a partial water change every day or every two days about 50% uh, sometimes a little bit more because uh, I need to vacuum some areas and for that um, sometimes I need to use a very tiny hose because on the beginning first I didn't want to stress the parents because you know those guys are very famous uh, when they feel so stressed they end up by eating the fry and um, because they feel trapped somehow so they don't want them uh, to lose but they end up by eating them so one of the ways was just trying to vacuum 
and all the organic waste and all the wasted food everywhere with a very tiny hose and um, and then uh, trying to feed the less I could and also in small quantities uh, so many times a day like four five six times a day and um, for doing that on the beginning I was using a syringe um, just putting there some uh, liquid atemia inside with some water from the tank try to blend it much I could however this is just dust uh, it's just the liquid version of this one Novatom and um, this one is working really really nice and um, I was also mixing up a little bit of uh, this GBL Novatom on uh, this cup so let's make a little bit of advertising to my nephew so it's from Bondi uh, a very well-known Portuguese brand of coffee so I just put some um, dry food mix it with the liquid atemia because this is also a temia so and but very very thin it's like a flour and then with the water from the tank just using a syringe and try to feed them close so you can imagine uh, if those guys are changing from spot to spot all the time and if you are eating some food uh, even if you just do it for a little bit you never know if it's too much or too less but the thing is those guys don't eat that much and then you start having a lot of organic waste when you start having a lot of organic waste a tank that is already not 100 percent balanced you start getting algae algae everywhere but i mean everywhere and uh, it was a little bit stressful mostly if you have ocd and you want to have everything so pristine so clean um no um, we can have we cannot have the best of the two worlds in one tank however the tank now looks quite clean because i spent almost two hours just to vacuum waiting for the fry just to move to one side of the tank and then move on the other one and then you know anytime they were the parents were moving the fry to another place i was vacuum on the opposite way but always is very but it's very difficult why because the guys don't have color they are so tiny and then probably if you are not with attention you went up just by vacuum a few and also i'm also using a brush just to go to the wood and try to take all the organic waste that is still on the leaves of the plants and also on the moss uh, in the ricardia everywhere because it deposits food everywhere and then we have other issue because i had to use a sponge just to block the intake of the filter and uh, all the particles all the algae that we are still brushing the wood and everything they will not be filtered they will stay inside of the tank and you need to manually vacuum it so anytime that i do a water change um, every single day or every two days it depends if um, i still have the time and the tank looks clean so i don't try to don't feed that too much and um, i will do it every two days and always after water change because uh, i use some prime or uh, some premier uh, and why usually i don't use any anti-chloride in my tanks but um, we are in summer and um, usually on summer uh, over here um, even the water being really good they try to increase a little bit of chloride in the water on chlorines uh, in the water in a way that um, will be safe to drink because they need to kill the bacteria they also some fires and uh, so they need to treat the water and usually they add a little bit more chemicals just to clean that so be careful if you are using tap water mostly on the summer um, try to use anti-chlorine um, in your tanks just to be sure you don't have any issue okay usually on the other months of the year uh, i don't use it but since i have the fry i tend to use it every time i take the water out i pour some uh, uh, prime or premier 
Premiere is good also because Premiere already have potassium on it. So I kind of uh, increase a little bit the fertilization on it, but not increasing the macro elements like nitrogen or phosphorus, because I'm pretty sure those will be already a lot inside of the tank. So I want just to provide some potassium. And uh, if it is anti-chloride with a little bit of potassium, it's just more than enough to run this tank. Mostly if I am do doing water change every single day or every two days. And also you can call me a little bit crazy, but uh, I'm using some Flourish XL and um, I would say overdosing it after water change because if they advise to use uh, 5 mLs for every 40 liters, this is 100 liter tank and uh, I am dosing 20 mLs every water change just to help me fight a little bit those algaes. I know some guys are against that. They say that this is poisonous and this is not healthy for the plants. This is not healthy for the fish. However, after two weeks by dosing it excel in the tank, the fries are still there. So just be sure when you do those any organic carbon in your tank, because organic carbon will not replace the, the CO2, but will also, but it will uh, allow you to increase the photosynthesis of your plants and fight some of the algae, okay? So what I am doing here is um, after doing the water change, um, I usually do it uh, on the peak of the photo period, more or less, because it's more or less the time that I am recording this video because uh, before I was spent two hours just to clean that. And I always those 20 mLs or 15 mLs, more or less, um, in the tank just to avoid to have more algae and also uh, to try to fight a little bit the algae that is already on the tank. So guys, uh, there is so many ways to use a product. If you don't use it in the best way, it's probably that you're going to have issues like melted plants, and um, I saw some guys just saying that they peel off the, the, the skin on the finger by a, come on, come on guys, this is not to swallow, okay? This is not to drink. This is a product. And if it was not safe, will not be available to sell, okay? Um, of course, take your precautions, use it as your own risk. I am using it anytime I have issues or mostly when I want to fight a little bit algae or sometimes plants are struggling a little bit, want to grow, I just dose it. And um, that will help to increase the photosynthesis and then also uh, help just to assimilate the iron on the side of the tank and then everything will be just fine. So plants will start to breathe again, everything start to grow normally and back to shape, okay? Another thing that I have done to fight those algae, because as you guys remember on the last video, I can put the link over here or over here, I don't know, uh, about masterclass, about how I built this one. I uh, mainly use uh, low money aquatic plants, uh, Busphalandras, Anubias, Microsorums, uh, Ricardia, Cryptocorins, uh, what I have used more, um, some uh, Ereocolum, and the thing is, all those plants are very slow growers. And um, to fight this issue, uh, because I said before that I didn't want to use stem plants, but the thing is, if I'm facing algae, if the tank is unbalanced, if nitrogen values are increasing because you have a lot of organic waste, a lot of things inside, you cannot vacuum as you want. Uh, because I don't want to vacuum the fry. I don't want to stress even more the fish. I cannot take all the water out. Uh, so I need to be very patient about this thing. And I cannot do what I usually do in any tank. And what I have done it was just to add some Eteranthera zostrifolia. It's probably one of the fast growing aquatic plants that I have know that um, it takes all the nutrients from the water and grow really, really fast. It's not um, just a couple of days that I placed in the tank. It's already growing really, really fast. And that will help also to take all the nutrients because since I didn't cap the soil as I should, because just to avoid the nutrients being released from the soil, I decided just to put them there. 
They are a little bit larger compared to Rotala Rotondifolia or Rotala Green. But for the purpose of this tank, because I want just to keep the green, I want something really fast to grow, uh, I have decided to use this one because I have used it before. And I must say, guys, this grows so fast that probably we need to trim every two weeks. And this is a good plan to take all the nutrients inside of the tank. All I need just to fight that algae, and mostly is green filamentosus algae, um, and uh, of course, it become that algae on the tank is not also that bad, okay? And why is not that bad? Because um, since uh, this food is so thin, but I, what I mean so thin is thin, what will uh, happen is getting stuck on that algae. And it's also a nice, good spot for the fry, just go there and bite and eat the food. Of course, um, you need to control the dose of the food that you give in the tank. On the beginning, it's very difficult to understand how much you should give. But the thing is, guys, um, this is a breeding tank. I already knew from the very beginning that I was going to use this tank to breed the Microgy of Ramirez uh, German Blue because I bought six, uh, one died, and um, I already knew that sooner or later I was going to split and going to try this time to breed them. And um, luckily for me, or so far, because um, we never know with these guys, but I really hope that the worst already is over and um, they will keep the fries because parents are very protective, I must say. Because anytime I put my hands just to clean, use a toothbrush or a brush or a hose, the guys are fighting against my hand, they're biting my hand just because they don't want anything strange inside of the tank. And uh, since they are very protective, even grabbing the kids with the mouth and moving from place to place, when the lights are slowly going down, they usually take all the kids and put it in the protected side so they can just lay down or in the sand or any rock or wood and they will be over them just to protect. I must say that uh, the behavior of this fish is amazing. I must say guys, um, this is probably my favorite fish. Uh, also my wife loved them and the reason why I have a tank in the kitchen is because of that. Because um, she wanted uh, so bad to have those fish here but we never expect they were going to breed or being successful. But the thing is, they are here for two weeks. Let's have the finger crossed and see if they can take this till the end. I believe so, because so far and after two weeks, the kids are growing, mostly because of the water change and also because of the food. And uh, I really hope they can handle this till the end. And, um, this is it guys uh, i will show you a little bit more of the tank how it looks like right now and um and this is it i will try to bring you a few more updates about it now that i unveil all the secrets regarding the tank um, i'm really sorry for didn't show you this uh, a little bit early but i wanted to be sure that this time i would be succeed in breeding the guys because giving false hopes is not that good because everybody was very excited to know if they um if the parents keep the fry if the fry survive if they still in the tank however in this i'm pretty sure the only way they can get out is if i vacuum them by a mistake or accidentally or the parents we go uh, eat them but uh, i don't think that none of those will happen because i am also very careful i am also very committed just to keep those kids longer i can and also if i have a lot of fries um maybe well, i don't know maybe i can sell them or maybe not i think i will get a bigger tank and put them all of them inside my wife will not let me just to give them some so guys i hope you have enjoyed this video um, if you are in holidays, just relax, take your time, be safe, uh, be careful with coronavirus, of course, and uh, see you guys in the next video. Take good care of yourself.